friends to another episode of The Human Project, your podcast for inspiring stories. I am Corina Rosa Falkenberg, and today I brought a very special friend of mine into the show. Her name is da 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 Sky. But not only this, yeah, her name is longer and it's so beautiful. Go for it. Sky Marie Blue mm. Niblet. Say it again. Sky Marie Blue Niblet. Sky Marie Blue Niblet. Like when I heard about you for the first time, I really fell in love with your name. How is it to have such a very beautiful and very special name? Because you know, like sky. So when all the time I say sky, I have a wish in, and this is the open sky up ahead of us, right? Yeah. So I assume for other people it's the same. So how do you feel being named sky? I actually never thought about that, but I think it's a very pretty name because the sky, yeah, it means something big. Like mm -hmm. the sky is so open and big and mm -hmm. yeah, I like it. I like my name. <laughs> so Sky is has just recently turned 13 and she has published last year a book. And you can get that book on Amazon, I have to say that from the beginning because I think this is just one thing where you're very special in. What is the book about, Sky? The book is about um, a girl and she lived with her family and her mom comes up with this idea of going on a trip with the family to connect and so they start this journey and they become connected as a family and Grace, the girl, really enjoys this trip. Two, she gets dragged onto this magical adventure and she gets dragged into a new dimension into a fairy world and something happened that her family landed in a different place in the hands of an evil witch and so Grace has a mission to find her family and while doing so she meets a lot of friends so yeah that's what it's about. You can be so proud. <laughs> Tell me, why does it come that you wrote a book and published it? At such a young age. I don't know. Well, I've always loved to tell stories to my brother. And then I just started writing. And I always wrote little stories. And then I just decided to finish a long story. And yeah, feel proud of it. And then I ended up publishing it. So writing a book is not an easy thing. Because you know about the outcome. A book to hold in hands, right? But then you have just like a paper in front of you and a pen and there you are sitting and you were sitting there on your own, right? There was no one telling you, Sky Marie, now you have to write chapter A, B and C and it is consisting of that and that part of that story because it was all pure imagination. So yeah. what did you do? You had that paper in front of you and what was your practice? How did you finish that book? Well, how I got the idea of the book was when um, I was going hiking and I just had this whole idea of how I was going to make this book and then I started it and then every time I didn't want to start and sit and write I just told myself how excited and how proud I would be when I have this book in my hands so I just so you had a wish in yeah mm. and I was really excited to mm. finish that vision mm. I didn't mean to interrupt you, I just thought like this is such a good point to because you said like you had in mind like this idea of a written book, right? Yeah. And this helped you in the whole process of writing because writing is a challenge. I know myself, right? You have good days and then you have bad days. Yeah. Right? Definitely. And there are like moments where you think like, okay, it's just <laughs> an empty paper, how do I fill it? Yeah. And so you say like for you it was this whole idea to once have your own book in your hands. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many hours would you say have you worked on the book? All together the whole book? Mm -hmm. Probably... I don't know, probably like, because I worked on it a year. Because when I started I didn't know anything about punctuations and full stops and like all those things. So when I got the editor, mm -hmm. I had to go through the whole book again and doing all the punctuations and full stops and all that crazy stuff. And so it took much longer than it was supposed to. But yeah, mm -hmm. so I think probably a long 
a lot of hours. Yeah. I think you raised also a very crucial point. It's not about just finishing it in a one row and one flow, but also to rework on what you have written, right? And I think this is at least half of the work at the end because you have to go over it again, right? And this is what you did. And as far as I know, you had someone next to you who helped you with that. Um, the editor? Yeah, the editor, right? Um, half of the time, but we also catched up once a week and she helped me and yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I did some at home alone, but mm -hmm. yeah. So when I learned to know you, it was in a cafe in Cashew Tree mm -hmm. and I heard two kids and they were laughing and they were like playing mm -hmm. and I heard the name Sky and then I heard the name of your brother and the name of your brother is? Sunny. Oh, that was just amazing. Two kids with the name Sky and Sunny. <laughs> and then I knew you must be the child from, from Beatrice. And when I captured you on the playground, I found both of you very, very uh, self-aware, very self-confident in knowing your borders, you know, knowing where your limits are, being at the same time on a high level of responsibility and curious, very curious. And I remember that your little brother, Sunny, who was six, right? Mm -hmm. Just an hour later or so when we had our shoes, he was about to send me one of his drawings and he did it with such a charm that I couldn't resist in buying one of his drawings. And I found also this from a little boy doing it with so much charm to get a bit more money into his pockets at the end of the month to bear in mind. What does he buy in general? Toys or I think chewing gum? No, I don't know what he buys. But, but he did it. I found that was so extraordinary. So what would you say? You have, again, just recently turned 13 years old. What is the secret behind your creativity, your inspiration? I think as well, your kind of freedom and sense of liberty. That's a difficult question, huh? Yeah. Um, well, the creativity. Um, I don't know, I think We've just, it's just something that me and Sunny have a lot because we love to do everything different and we always have like different ideas and we always, when we get an idea in our head, we want to accomplish that idea like the book or my brother drawing or if we want to be a, do skateboarding, then we do skateboarding. And so we always, yeah, we always want to go out there and do something big, you know, and change the world, that's, yeah. Yeah, and I remember <laughs> when I saw your little brother skateboarding, he's really into that. When he wanted to learn something, he goes for it, right? And I think you are the same. So you were homeschooled, both of you. I think you have a very special uh, story. Your mom is from Germany, your dad is from Australia. Both of them had all they wanted in Germany and you were born in Germany until the age of three. Correct me and interrupt me if you're free if I tell nonsense. And your mom took uh, both of you to Australia as so you lived there. And uh, you never went to a public school. So you never were in that kind of public educational system. I think you went to special schools like the Montessori school from time to time. But now you're on the island of Bali, you are largely homeschooled. So how does it look like? Because like the children of my friends in Germany, for example, they are all schooled. So what does it look like a day for you, Sky Marie, being homeschooled? What's happening there? Can you just do what you want? Are you just watching television the whole day and are happy to have mom's iPhone? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, um, we can actually choose how long we want to do our homeschooling for because my mom knows we're responsible and we choose our time um, well. So we do movies once a week. We don't have much technology time actually. No, we're never allowed to play like games or stuff. But in homeschooling, we get to choose our project or for example, go surfing or um, do maths. I sometimes have some tutoring so that I can get better in maths and we do art projects and we learn about science and do science experiments or 
make videos, like funny videos, like stuff like that. That's what we do over the day. And we learn from that a lot. Yes. What would you say can you learn the most? Like, do you have friends that go to public schools? Yeah, but I haven't seen them for a really long time. All of my friends in Bali are definitely homeschooled because they have, you know, their... Yeah. It's a very common thing here in Bali when you're an expat, right? To have your children uh, and to organize maybe some schooling projects together. And my personal impression is that one reason why you are where you are and why Sky and uh, Sunny, both of you are as you are, is because like you are not schooled in a traditional way that's my personal view so i really admire both of you a lot um i mean now you have an idea from a school from a public school um despite you have never been there what is your idea of a public school how do you think it's there um i don't know but i it has its goods and it has its bads i guess um um i know you can get education there too, but you can also get a lot of education out of homeschooling because your mom just works with you or your tutor. You don't have like one teacher working with like 20 kids. So I think that's a very good advantage. But um, a school, I would just like to, sometimes I'd like to get to know it and a little bit and see how it feels and see, I guess, what, other kids most of the world has to go through and how it is and yeah i guess it would just another experience i would like to put in my life yes mm -hmm. yeah because that fits to being curious right in life and i think that you are yeah what was the biggest adventure you did just recently what happened and um, what did you take out of it <laughs> yeah, or just like one adventure where you could say like, this was really a thing I just did recently, because I know your life is pretty exciting, uh, at least to me, there is a lot that stimulates you around you, and um, I think it's very hard to sometimes when you're in, because you don't view it being so special, but was there anything you would like to share? Um... Well, I do a lot of adventures, but like See. when I like traveled around <laughs> Australia with the camper van, but that wasn't really recently. So, I but it happened, right? It was just your ma your mom with uh, the two of you on her own in a huge van, um, going through Australia. Yeah, and I mean maybe because I asked the question was like you told me um, you like to, and again correct me if I'm wrong, you like and love to get lost with your best friend. Yeah. So I think this is a great adventure. What is this about? Because again, we're here on the island of Bali. There's still a lot of jungle around, mm -hmm. yeah? Dangerous animals everywhere. <laughs> so what does it mean to get lost for you? Well, I think it's just fun, the, the, the thought of being like in the wild alone and like having the thing of surviving. Even if we mostly know that we're not lost, it's just the fun thing of thinking we're lost and making a whole story to it. <laughs> and I love doing that with my friends because my friends also love just to go on adventures and into the wild and like just enjoy ourselves in the nature. It's just a lot of fun and adventures is something amazing and mm. yeah, I really love adventures. So where have you been into the wild just recently? Was it a beach? Was it the ocean itself? Was it a neighbor's uh, garden? <laughs> Last time I went in the nature was mm -hmm. when I went surfing because I like to surf and I live right by the beach so I'm really near the nature every single day but I go surfing also every single day and I really enjoy surfing and so always when I get to go surfing it's like a new experience and a new adventure and a new challenge because you always have that little fear in your belly of the big waves and the sea creatures and yeah what do you do i mean again we also um, lived partly together so i think i know you a bit but what do you do when you are afraid in which situation does it happen that you say wow this was really frightening me is it 
being by your own in your in your room at night because it's a beautiful house right now next to the ocean but your room is a bit far away from your mom's room so what would you say did you did you live some moments of fear through and what did you do at that at that moment um well this is a kind of um not the best reason but I was at a water park and there was this really, really, really big slide. It was a 25 meter drop, like it was like where you sit, stand in it and then the floor drops and you just go falling full speed down. And I had to overcome a lot of fears because it's just that like height, I'm a little scared of heights sometimes. So it was a lot of fear I had to overcome, but I just told myself that I was safe and that I would feel very proud and I would feel very great when I was at the bottom of that slide and I did it and I I went home feeling very proud that I actually went down that slide when I was really scared of so mm. and I can hear out of your words because before you said like even when you were writing your book you had the vision of a book accomplished right and this is what you do as well when you yeah. are in a fearful moment mm -hmm. Do you work a lot with self-affirmation? Like affirmations? Well, I used to have like do affirmations every night and every morning and say them like five times, I would draw them out. Now I do them just in my head or sometimes say them in front of the mirror or um, just say like to myself some like compliments. Oh. This is a beautiful gift, so you make to yourself some compliments. When I'm maybe feeling down or... Mm -hmm. Yeah. And would you like to disclose one of the compliments you make to yourself? It's a very personal question, of course. But maybe there is something you would like to share. Well, I sometimes say... Uh... <laughs> oh, you have to be closer to me, I think. So if not, uh, it's just me <laughs> in the middle. No need to run away. So if you, if you just if you feel like comfortable, I mean, I heard this and this is why I'm right now going in because a friend of mine just said recently the same thing. She said like, I make myself gifts in sitting, she's sitting in front of a mural and she's just saying like, even things like I forgive you to herself, you know, and I'm perfect as I am. So is this something you also say to yourself? I say that I'm beautiful. <laughs> oh! And that I am talented and stuff like that. So. And that I have a lot of friends who care for me and stuff like that. Yeah. It's beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. So you spoke about challenges and I would have there another question. Is this okay for mm -hmm. you? Um, I know both of your parents and um, if it's okay to touch the subject. Um, your parents separated recently, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I think I can remember your opinion about it. So this is why I dare raising raising the point. And I thought it was so beautiful because there was a moment I have asked you, Sky, how is it for you when you are surrounded by friends and some of your friends might have like a happy looking family life, like where you can see there is a positive pattern between the parents. How is it for you knowing that your parents have decided to go for a separation? You remember? So um, yeah. again, how do you how do you feel today about it? Well, um, I sometimes do see I guess my friends or their um, amazing families, but I think it was really all for a reason and Some people aren't just meant to be, and I know that with my parents, maybe. And I know they can still be friends and stuff, but it was, was not right for them to live together. And I think it was just more um, happier for me and Sunny when there was just no fighting. It was just all calm. We went to my dad's and to my mom's. But now my dad left to Australia five days ago for work, so he'll have to be back until, like, September, so. Yeah. It's a long time, right, when he's yeah. away now. And you just got away like used to this model of being three days with your dad and the rest of the time with your mom, right? Yeah. 
did you like that kind of way of living like having two rooms um, two places where you're where you're where the things you like are and two different ways of being integrated in your family how was it for you um well i it was sometimes a little difficult when i sometimes i just wanted to stay in one house because there i had you know and i sometimes didn't like just moving 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 and then always having to pack my bag and leave again and it just felt like i found my peace in the other home and then i had to leave again you know but i got used to it and i think my brother did too and then we got more used to it and now we are for a while just in one house so it's yeah you can see nothing is at the end permanent you never know what happened because it was not planned like that your dad is going to leave so sky marie like you are now 13. i barely can remember when i was 13. i just know that if i i was full of ideas and wishes what i might become and do in my in my in my later stage of life what is your dream? What would you like to to put the major focus in your life in? I don't know. Um, well, actually, I think I told you this before. I'm like, what? I remember. <laughs> I, I remember. There was the surfer, the sur being a surfer in Hawaii. This I remember. And I also always say this, um, that I always see it, it in this perspective, that I want to be... I always see who I want to be now mm. and I'll see who I am in the future but I also always concentrate who I want to be now kind if I want to be a writer if I want to sing yeah and I just try to enjoy my day every single day and try something new every single day and learn. try something new mm. Mm. yes yeah. and learn Beautiful for me. You are such an inspiration. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I mean, when I listen to you, I very often have the impression you are such a soul, like such a wise soul. Like those things that you are saying, yeah, they they are so profound. They are so deep. Like <laughs> if you would have lived already a couple of lives. Um, when you say learning, learning new. Uh, for me, I think it's very important because you keep your curiosity, you expand your mind, like you train your mind when you learn new things. Mm -hmm. What was the latest thing you taught yourself or someone else taught you to learn new in life? The last thing I learned? Well, actually, over the few days, I learned two new things. I learned how to wakeboard. Oh, really? Yes. How fancy is that? And I, because I went to a wakeboarding park and I was very, I was, it was a lot of fun and I think I was very good. And I went around and around and it was just a lot of fun. And so I learned that new and I also learned algebra. So, yeah, that's mm. the two things I learned new over the few days. And what are the next projects you have on your table? Writing another book. Ah, here we go. You like that, right? The yeah. writing, yeah. Well, I think I'm going to write another book. Well, I'm started and I'm going to try to succeed on the next book. <laughs> so if someone here is now listening, yeah, and uh, it's a little teen and she says, or, her, or he, he's saying, I would love, I would so love to also start writing a book. What would be your recommendation? I would say that it's an um, it's I think that everybody should follow their dreams and I think that's an amazing dream and that everybody can be little entrepreneurs and that everybody should follow their passion and and just enjoy life because right now you only have one life in this body and so I think, yeah, follow your dreams and beautiful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really, well said. What kind of book do you currently read, Sky? Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> and which one? The fifth book. And in English or in Deutsch? English. <laughs> well, in Deutsch it's auch ganz toll, yeah? Yeah. Ich hoffe, du kommst mit bald besuchen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
But I can't read German, so <laughs> I can only speak it. It will come, no worries. Mm -hmm. I would have maybe one last question to you, if this okay. is fine for you. Mm -hmm. uh, or let's make three out of it. Also okay? Three questions? Yeah, we go okay. for three. So you have a little brother. Mm -hmm. I do have two little brothers. And sometimes they are really a burden. I remember when I was younger, right? They're not just fun. Sometimes <laughs> they go, oh. <laughs> so their breast and they receive for Christmas is bigger than mine, whatever. I, I remember those little tiny aspects in the life of having siblings. So um, what is, how do you deal the best with your little brother? Because again, he's not as grown up as you are. Maybe some things he just doesn't know, he cannot do. So you need to be patient. So what is what is your best way in in dealing with your little brother? I don't always deal with it good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I try most of the time to stay calm and mm -hmm. try to like annoy if he's trying to like tease me or something. Or he get me frustrated, but sometimes I kind of get a little mad. <laughs> what do you do when you get mad at him? I guess say I tease him or push him away or try to like get him out of my room if he tries like getting in my room. But I also can deal with him now. I just leave him to him and wherever he is I walk away and leave him have his space because at that moment, maybe he just needs space and mm -hmm. he needs quiet and needs to find himself again. And then I just go somewhere and just continue on doing my stuff and just leave my brother. Mm -hmm. And if he still follows me, then I just go to my mom and then she can deal with it. Oh, this is such a good point to say like, give the other one space. I think this yes. is important in life, no matter whether you are dealing with your little brother or with your partner or your own parents, right? Do you sometimes need space from your mother as well? Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Or do you think sometimes even she needs some space for herself? Of course, because sometimes being a mother is hard, so she just needs space to be herself again and see friends and dance and yeah. Mm, I remember I danced with your mom. She's good in that, yeah. It's like filling up the batteries, right? Too mm -hmm. strong again. Um, two more questions. One is like, do you want to sing? <laughs> <laughs> because we were for your birthday together and we were in a karaoke bar. And I heard you singing and it was amazing. And I would love to have a few lines sung by you. Uh -huh. um, if you feel like, you can say no. Um, I don't really have anything to sing right now. I haven't sung mm. since the karaoke bar. Mm. Really? Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't really sing that much anymore. Oh, I know, uh. I know, no, no, no. There is one thing I would love to invite you to present here. And this is, it was the, the, the rap, you remember? Oh. Because you wrote a rap song. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah, I wrote a rap song, yes. <laughs> and how about that one? It's good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I know. I haven't sung that one also since. But there was, that it day. was a beautiful melody. Can I a bit push you to present it? I, I don't even know how it could. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, I haven't sung it since that day. So Interesting. So, I don't know. I don't know. We skip it. Um, I mean, I, I have one song, but I sang it only in the shower, like, <laughs> I would be happy to hear it. Okay, okay, yeah. It's called Faded. <laughs> I only know the first few lines, yes. I'm okay, yeah. <sighs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to think how it goes. Okay, this is a little bit nerve-wracking. Okay. 
Okay, I got it. You. <laughs> oh, I can hear the first tone already. Really, Sky, I wouldn't say that I, I can't don't um, <laughs> believe it. This is why I've asked the question. Maybe I knew up front that you might not say no. <laughs> but your voice is amazing. It really touched my heart. Thank you. I'm better with music. I'm not very good with acting. Yeah, it's, it's a challenge here. We have here the camera. I hear this thing. <laughs> and, me, and I pushed you. I know. Okay, I got it. You are the shadow to my light, wanna see your heart. It's not a star, we fade away. That's all I wanna say. <laughs> I would, what would I do to have a voice like you? You really should go back to singing. Thank you. I didn't even know that you stopped. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Beautiful, really. Thank you. Mm, the last one. Yes. Okay. What's your idea, your wish, and your concept, yeah, of um, a perfect family, society, community life? I'm asking that all around because I know about. We have spoken about your parents being separate, like mm -hmm. we've spoken about you being homeschooled, being mm -hmm. raised differently, like a large majority of the children yeah. of my friends. So we have shared that you have friends that you like to go out for adventures. Your mom is a very special mother who likes going dancing and also is part of a kind of community circle, which yeah. is very common here in Bali. So this is why I've asked, what is your perfect idea of a social structure where people are comfortable in? Is it for you like family or is it like friends or has it, has it rather to do with some values you share? Whatever, where do you feel where would you say, or what would you wish the world to be like? Uh, well, uh, that's a question. Uh, okay. Um, Is the question clear? I mean, even I, uh, yeah. It's, I think, I, yeah. if she I got don't understand idea. it really wrong, but I'll try to explain it well. Um, if I could make the world like how, if I could see the world like, um, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think I would love the world to help. And mm -hmm. I guess everybody bring a little hand in and like everybody try to support each other. And I guess a thing that breaks the world up is being right. Mm -hmm. Being right because everybody wants to be right. I mean, being wrong is something I guess you don't feel mm -hmm. You don't feel, you want to be right because you feel like it will show, it will make you look good. Mm -hmm. And then it can also bring war and fights and stuff. So if everybody could just, if everybody was just connected and talked and shared stories and opinions and everybody was friends, it would just be an amazing world. And if everybody could bring a little help to this world and it would change society. <laughs> yeah, I love you even more, my dear. <laughs> so well said. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I think there is, is there anything we can add on that? From my side, no, it's perfect words. Try not to be so often right, but yeah. love instead. I think this was the key message, right? Definitely, yeah. You're amazing. And yeah. I'm already looking forward for your second book. Thank you so much for this interview, my dear. Thank you. And thank you, my dear listeners, for having been with us on today's journey with Sky Marie. It was a very special episode, a very courageous young woman, and I'm happy to have you here. And again, thank you so much for the time and your attention. You can find more information about Sky Marie in the show notes, also where you can get her book. Mm -hmm. What's the title of your book again? Grace's Pop of Wonders. Mm -hmm. And I would like to invite you to subscribe to my channel. Please leave a review. I uh, really love reading them. You can leave a review on the iTunes Apple podcast or on Instagram. And again, thank you so much for being with us. It's always like also for me a huge pleasure to get to know those beautiful personalities and stories. And it's for me like really motivating also today here with you Sky Marie. I'm Thank looking you. forward for many adventures with you. Yes, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> so 
keep on shining and um, see you very soon. Yours, Karina Roseland.